நேர்களை மீண்டும் உங்களை மைசூர் நிகழ்ச்சியில் சந்திப்பது ரொம்பவே சந்தோஷம் நேர்களை அதாவது தண்ணி நமக்கு எங்க இருந்து வருதுன்னு நமக்கு தெரியாது ஆனா நம்ம தாகத்தை அது போக்குதுன்னு சொல்லலாம் அதே மாதிரி அரிசி எங்க இருந்து விதைக்கப்படுது யாரால விதைக்கப்படுது எதுவுமே நமக்கு தெரியாது ஆனா நம்ம அது பசிய போக்குது அதே மாதிரி தாங்க ஒவ்வொரு நாட்டுக்கும் மிக முக்கியமானவர்கள் உதவியாளர்கள்னு பார்த்தா கண்டிப்பா அது சாதனையாளர்கள் தான் அப்படிப்பட்ட சாதனையாளர்கள் எங்க பிறந்தாங்க எங்க வளர்ந்தாங்க எதுவுமே நம்மளால தெரிஞ்சுக்க முடியலன்னா கூட அவங்க எதுல சாதனை அடைஞ்சாங்கிறத கண்டிப்பா நம்மளால தெரிஞ்சுக்க முடியும் அப்படிப்பட்ட சாதனையாளர்களை தான் ஒவ்வொரு வாரமும் நம்ம மைல்ஸ்டர் நிகழ்ச்சியில பார்த்துட்டு இருக்கோம் அப்படி இந்த வாரம் எந்த சாதனையாளரை பார்க்க போறோம் அவங்க எதுல சாதனை அடைஞ்சாங்கிறத பார்க்க போறோம் வாங்க நிகழ்ச்சியில போய் பார்க்கலாம் Hi viewers in today's episode we are going to meet Mr Soli Darwala he is into the art and craft for more than 50 years shall we meet him Soli Daruwala born in uh, Nairobi East Africa and uh, of course came away to India when I was about 2 or 3 years old so I don't remember anything about Africa but then I was for the most of the time in Bombay and uh, I have done my education in Bombay and then i worked for one of the better known personalities of bombay mr keku gandhi the founder of kemold uh, uh company in bombay they were the first manufacturers of uh, picture frames well i mean uh, after finishing the school uh, i i joined the Indian docks as a paid apprentice i mean we couldn't afford i could not afford my family could not afford to send me to a college so immediately after the school uh i am the, the matriculation the matric, matric exam was changed from matriculation to secondary school certificate examination and mine was the first batch of secondary school and, but that the paid apprentice uh, we had to sign the bond of about 7 years and which i felt was a very long process and the pay scale was not very encouraging and then we came across i mean opposite the house where i stayed there was a gentleman of my community who said that he, Yeah, I should join his sort of business as one of the salesmen and he would teach me everything about business so I I mean I joined his shop as a salesman but then I was not very happy over there and then ultimately I joined as I to tell you the Kemold company which was the which was a company pioneers in the manufacture of picture frames and they are the pioneers of even dealing with art in bombay keku gandhi he is still there living in bombay and uh, i worked for him for long many years thereafter i wanted to start something on my own thank you so much for your introduction sir and when did you started your business in art and craft and how was the experience can you please share with us well we entered into india we came back uh, we came back to india because of the sort of a tragic uh, one of the tra- tragic happenings in my family in the sense that uh, my father lost two of his brothers in india and my grandmother that is my father's mother was was in india 
and she lost two of her sons, one aged about 39 and the other aged 42 in the span of four days. So that upset my grandmother very much. And since my father was the youngest, she requested him to come back to India. That's how the whole family came back to India. As I tell you, as far as I was concerned, Madras was a virgin field. It, it, as you know, one of the main cities of India, uh, the art scene was very much uh, not there. No picture framing, good picture framing was being done. I had the long experience of, I mean, picture framing and dealing with art. So I thought Madras is the place. And at that time, you see, accommodation was very easily available in Madras to start my own business without much investment of giving a pagri or something of that sort. That's how I started. And we got a lot of encouragement from the then principal of the Madras College of Art, Mr. K. C. S. Panika, and his team. And uh, of course, the media was also very cooperative. All these initiatives were there. And uh, we started, up, I was quite comfortable when we started, not much of a business, but still. My eldest, my eldest daughter was going to a boarding school in Pondicherry, and I very much wanted to be nearer the place. So Pondicherry being only about a hundred miles away from Pondicherry, I'm from Madras, I preferred to start in Madras. Very, very little awareness was there. But slowly it picked up. That, that is what I would say, you see. Because we are not, the art is not being exposed as much as it should be. That's throughout India, I would say. For example, you see in the foreign countries, even the school children are taken to the museums and art shows and whatnot, you see where the awareness for art is there to a greater audience. It is not so. It is not so anywhere else. For example, I mean, we have hardly, we have hardly seen any school children coming to art exhibitions to see the show. Or for that matter, very few school children are being taken to museums to the shows. Now things are a little better, I would say. People are exposed to art, but we are not very much exposed to art. Today you saw, I mean, these two girls who came, they came from the Stella Maris College, you see, from the art department. As you know, Stella Maris College has got an art department. And then you see the people who are working there, you see, uh, we're also very much interested in coming and seeing the art. So that helps a lot. your business on arts and crafts and could you please tell us how was the experience and how was the purchasing capacity on arts and crafts with the Chennai peoples? It slowly grows on people you see after all you see when the activities when you have the shows more often then the more people are naturally I mean taking interest and they come forward. They were very progressive people like Mr. K.C.S. Panika, who was also a very dynamic person. When he was the principal of the college, you see, he used to have lots of activities, you see. He had shows 
he has chosen the colleges from time to time. He would be there for every exhibition you see we had. He was always there. And along with him, naturally, you see the staff and the students and all these students. So the awareness slowly grew. There was a lot of, uh, I mean, exposure by the press. Then, of course, the TV came and they also I mean, were very helpful. You see. Thank you so much, sir. It was great to know about what are the things happen in the early 1960s and 1970s. And now, could you please tell us about your family and your wife who supported a lot for your business? Well, my wife was always working with me. I mean, we worked, we worked in a very, very disciplined way. Uh, say we started at 9 in the morning and we closed at 7 in the evening. We had one day off. Sunday was the day off. And usually, you see, even on the holidays, we were open. But then, you see, when we say that we opened at 9 o'clock, we did open at 9 o'clock. And not 9.15 or 9.20 or anything of that sort. And when we say that we closed at 7 o'clock, it was 7 o'clock. So that discipline was there, you see, all the time. It was a very disciplined way. And then, supposing, you see, I was not in uh, Madras, then it was my wife who took over and looked after the business, you see. I mean, we did, did the picture framing, for example, many a time, the workers would not come. So we ourselves, I mean, uh, did the framing, you see, including my wife, cutting of the frames, joining of the frames, cutting of the glass and whatnot. So that way, you see, we were quite independent. Thank you so much, sir. You have seen and you have experienced a lots and lots of peoples in your business and as well as in your change in trends. And now, what's the opinion towards a generation and as well as changes in trends? Well, there's a lot of awareness. There's a lot of awareness. For example, you see at that time, when we started also, there were about four, five, six smaller galleries who were showing. Today, I think... Uh, if you see, I don't know, I'm not very much aware how many galleries, but I'm sure that there are 20 to 30 galleries around. Last Sunday, one of the, big, one of the biggest uh, um, galleries has opened, you see. So that awareness is there, you see. So it certainly helps. Well, we have to, we have, we have to sort of, you know, uh, one has to be very careful about all these things, you see, particularly the copies made. You see, there are, for example, people who are better known. This is a trend which comes when the people sell quite a lot. Then people who try to sort of make copies of such things and try to sell it as genuine, you see. One has to be aware of that. Well, I mean, uh, in every, in, in every way, she supported. That's about all. In every way. By being physically present, by, I mean, taking over the work, by, I mean, looking into things, getting to know of it, getting to know the artists, being in touch, keeping in touch with them. She has got a very pleasant temperament, so people, naturally, local artists, would very much appreciate uh, her taking a little interest in them reacting with them, you see. It made all the difference. Viewers, we had a wonderful experience with Soli Darwala. Now, we are going to meet his second generation, his daughter, Mrs. Sarala Banerjee. Shall we meet her? Hi, madam. You just spoke to Soli Darwala, the pioneer who started Indian art in South India, contemporary Indian art in South India. And... Uh, the gallery name was Sarla's Art Center. Today we still use the old name, but the new name is also Art World. Art World was started or continued rather from Sarla's Art Center by my husband Bishwajit Banerjee and me. My name is Sarla Banerjee. And uh, we tried to take it forward as the second generation. My school days were excellent. Uh, they were very... Um, Instructive, we did not have to mug anything, we just had to learn and happily. 
and it was stress free and I still have friends and some of the friends have become artists, some have become collectors, so even that is, the, it's always growing the circle. much ma'am. So, what's the new ideas and what's the new initiatives taken by you to develop your business in the second generation? Uh, what we did is we, the first thing is we tried to document whatever came. My father had a very large collection. What he did basically was uh, at that time he didn't sell too much art but he always tried to buy to help artists. Uh, he was never a rich man himself but he really patronized artists. And you can talk to any artist in Madras today or Chennai today and you, the old generation will tell you that if Mr. Daruwala was there, if he had 50 rupees in his pocket, he would give it and he would buy their work. So due to that, he created a very large collection. Now we could not, we still haven't documented all that he collected, but since we have started, we have slowly managed to document most of the work that we have collected. Thank you so much madam, it was very good to know about you very well. After taking over your father's business, have you tried business overseas? Well, first of all, uh, not too many people were, when we started in 91, uh, there, there were not too many people doing shows abroad. And we can say for a fact that the, the best show put up in Japan was by us in a 5000 square feet gallery in an area called Ginza, which is where the Sony building stands just two blocks away from the Sony building. Uh, we did a very prestigious art exhibition with the likes of Arpana Kaur, uh, Hussein and all their works. We also did at the Power Galleries Hong Kong. Uh, not too many people can, even though they had all the wealth, could present such a beautiful show and uh, so professionally. Thank you so much, madam. How did you overcome your competitions and how was your pricing? Could you please share with us? Uh, honestly, we really don't look out for competition. We try to do our own thing. We do try to do it honestly. And for us, there are two or three things which are very important. One is pricing. So we don't exceed a certain price limit. And, uh, you know, if we have to have the biggest artist but a mediocre work, we don't want it. We'd rather have so-called middle range artists who are very good in their work but who are priced rationally and reasonably, not based on greed, but based on rational. So uh, I think that helps a lot also. And then integrity. We want integrity. We want to have people who, everybody should be able to buy art. It's not just for the elite or somebody like that. So uh, Actually, there's a whole different variation. Um, if you live in Delhi and Bombay, you can price your works exorbitantly and people will buy it just for the sake of buying it because their neighbor has it, because there's peer pressure. But uh, when you work in a place like Tamil Nadu, uh, I feel people are more conservative, more intelligent, they don't waste their money. They actually want to buy good art for good value for money. So I think that's very important. Thank you, madam. Could you please tell us about the two persons who impressed you a lot? Actually, um, I can't specify certain two people, but I can specify two generations. One is the freedom fighters of India who gave their life. For me, that's very, very inspiring, very sacrificing, especially from Bengal who gave their lives to actually free India, who were celibate to celebrate India's uh, freedom. And the second is the new generation who is full of ideas, full of new thoughts, full of creativity. So these are the two generations which actually really impress me. Lots of awards actually, uh, apart from mentions in Forbes magazine when my parents looked after the gallery, they always had these beautiful old bungalows which they rented out and stuff. So they were mentioned in Forbes magazine when Prithish Nandi was illustrated weekly. Um, 
editor, uh, it was mentioned there. I mean, there were plenty of instances where it's constantly, the first auction in Madras was held by uh, Sarla's Art Center in uh, aid of charity. Uh, we've done that many times after that again. But the first art camp was done by Art World, uh, where we invited artists from all over the country to participate, to have a brotherhood, to paint, to be open to public for the viewing and to enjoy. So we did a lot of these interesting things. Mm -hmm.